Well, folks, uh, welcome to our service of Compline on this Wednesday evening. Um, if you are listening in using our phone line service, uh, then great uh, for you to join us. Um, just some little announcements before we begin our service tonight. I've been mad scribbling down some of the things that I need to get across. Um, first of all, uh, in terms of harvest, harvest is always going to look a little bit different because of the restrictions that we have. But we are going to have harvest services on Sunday the 11th of October in the morning. And we'll not be able to decorate the church in the same way because uh, just of, of the, the, the guidelines really. Um, but what we were thinking of doing was we're going to leave tubs at the back of the churches on that Sunday so that as you um, arrive or as you depart from the church on that morning, you'll be able to deposit uh, non-perishable items um, that we can give through to Newton Abbey uh, Food Bank. So please consider doing that. Um, and if you're not going to physically be able to get out to church on that Sunday morning, then please get in touch um, with David, our administrator, or myself, um, and we can make arrangements um, to do that. Also, I've had a few phone calls from people who don't want to come physically back into the church buildings, but want to hand over their um, uh, envelopes. Uh, and if you want to do that, um, then please get in touch with David and we'll arrange to, to call and collect those. The next thing uh, to talk about uh, is that from next week onwards, we want to open up uh, our uh, church buildings, our halls, um, for use for small groups, house groups, uh, and prayer groups. Um, so um, we are expanding our actual list of small groups that are happening. Uh, and so please, uh, if you're already involved in one or if you'd like to be part of one, uh, look up our website and it'll give you details of, um, of those small groups in the next day or two. Um, so that's happening from, from next week and it'll give you a location as to where those groups are going to be meeting. We're not gonna be meeting in homes for the current restrictions, but through social distancing, we can use our church buildings. The next thing to mention is that at this time of the year, we normally have our shoebox Christmas appeal, where we, we ask people to make up shoeboxes full of uh, items and gifts to then give through Bl uh, Blytheswood. Um, we're going to do that, and we'd ask you to, uh, to do that and prepare your uh, boxes with them wrapped in, in Christmas paper, um, uh, and make those available to us before the end of October. That would be great. Final announcement is that our Easter vestry was obviously postponed because of the coronavirus outbreak um, and our diocese have asked us to make that happen. Um, we, we need to do that for, for um, just reasons to do with our church constitution. Um, and so we're going to be holding that. It'll be a rather brief meeting, um, but it's to vote in uh, positions uh, in offices uh, within the church. That annual vestry meeting or that annual general meeting will take place on Wednesday the 14th of October in the evening in St John's Halls at 7.30pm. Um, please make a point of, of coming along to that. It's a very important meeting. It'll be very brief this year, um, but please come along um, to give support um, to the work of the church. Uh, our service of Compline tonight, uh, as always, can be found on page 154 of your, pew, uh, or of your, your, your prayer books. Um, you can also find the service online on our website under uh, useful resources. And so let's begin. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Brethren, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. 
psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 142. I cry aloud to the Lord, to the Lord I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him and tell him of my trouble. When my spirit faints within me, you know my path. In the way wherein I walk, have I have they laid a snare for me? I took I sorry, I look to my right hand and find no one who knows me. I have no place to flee to, and no one cares for my soul. I cry out to you, O Lord, and say, You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am brought very low. Save me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. When you have dealt bountifully with me, then shall the righteous gather around me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our appointed uh, reading for uh, this evening is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 2 through to 8. And just then some people were carrying a paralysed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bread, sorry, take your bed and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowds saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blasphemy isn't one of those words that you hear very often in our Western context these days, but you may hear it mentioned in other religions. Blasphemy is where you say words or carry out actions that are directly against God. For example, were you to curse uh, God in any way, that would be blasphemy. Or if you were to make fun of scriptures for your own gain, that would be blasphemy. In some countries, the penalty for blasphemy is still death. And yet in our own context, uh, our Christian faith and Jesus Christ, they seem to be mocked daily uh, by comedians on the TV. I wonder how often would those comedians be willing to mock the Islamic faith? In our reading, the the scribes who are accusing Jesus of blasphemy are not brave enough yet uh, to do this in a public setting. The scripture states that they say this to themselves. So they're, they're just thinking this thing through. They're still uncertain. But Jesus knows their hearts. He knows what they're thinking. He knows that there is a brokenness within them. In fact, as we look at the story of this paralysed man, we also see um, another type of paralysis. There's the paralysis of the man uh, physically, and there's the spiritual paralysis of these scribes. And actually, in different ways, both need the same thing. They need healing from Jesus. They need set free from their paralysis. Now there's a a big danger in jumping the gun a little, adding one and one and making 10 million and thinking that in some way I'm going to imply that the man who is paralysed is that way because of some kind of sin. That in some way I'm suggesting that the behaviour of the scribes and the behaviour of the man originate from the same thing. And I suppose I am saying that, but I'm also not saying that. Jesus does say to this man, your sins are forgiven. 
We have no information to say that this man has been paralyzed as a result of an accident or whether it's been by birth. But what we're able to say is that we all live in a broken world and therefore since the fall, we are all broken. The answer to the brokenness within us, whether that is illness or in the case of the scribes, blasphemy or whatever it is, um, the answer is uh, Jesus. So let me let me just reword that again because I've, I've said something wrong and I want to correct myself. The answer to the brokenness in us, whether that is illness or, or the illness that is seen in the hearts of the scribes as they speak against Jesus and about blasphemy, whatever it is, the answer is Jesus. God is love and Jesus loves both the paralyzed man and these scribes uh, as they accuse. The solution for brokenness only will come from what Jesus has done on the cross and his destruction uh, of everything that is broken and his victory through his resurrection. There is no other cure for sickness of any sort. With a word, Jesus forgives the paralyzed man and he tells him to take up his bed and go home. Healing brings wholeness. The crowd are amazed and they see what Jesus did as affirmation of his God-given authority. But there's nothing more that's actually said about the scribes. The paralyzed man walks off. The scribes are no longer talked about. We'll continue to see the story unravel, however, that those in religious positions will manipulate, they'll connive to bring a case against Jesus. The paralysis is still in their heart and it's growing. They don't have the faith which the paralyzed man has and therefore their inner healing is not described. God can see into their hearts. At times, you know, I will sit beside people who are physically ill and the obvious question of healing will arise. Why are they not getting any better? Now, in my view, when they put their trust in God, they are. It might not be a physical healing that we are going to see in our lifetime. The healing will be done in their heart and their acceptance that God has something greater planned, maybe not in this world, but certainly in the next. The peace that comes in knowing that God, through Jesus Christ, loves, forgives and brings us inner healing is, in my view, far greater than the healing that some people might expect physically. Yes, the paralyzed man was healed physically, but the greater healing had already come through his personal faith in Jesus. The man, like all that are mentioned in the scriptures, is inevitably going to die. But the healing done for eternity will be what counts the most. Something that the religious scribes don't get to see. So the question tonight is this. What areas of our lives are we experiencing paralysis in right now? Ask God today to bring healing through Jesus into your life. Place that trust that this paralyzed man had. Place that trust in Jesus alone. And as you do this, hear those reassuring words from Jesus that he said to the paralyzed man. He said this, take heart. Amen. We continue with our service. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thy God of truth. Let's say together the words of this hymn as a prayer tonight. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that thou with wanted love which keep thy watch around us while we sleep. O oh, let no evil dreams be, me, uh, be near, or phantoms of the night appear, our ghostly enemy restrain, lest aught of sin our bodies stain. Almighty Father, hear our cry through Jesus Christ our Lord Most High, who with the Holy Ghost and thee doth live and reign eternally. Amen. 
Keep me as the apple of an eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And so we say together the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. We affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord, guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. We now confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, through our own grievous fault. Wherefore we pray, God, to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins. Deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And bring us to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto us pardon and peace for all our sins, time for amendment of life and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come on to thee. And so let us pray. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Be present, O merciful God and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may repose upon thy eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before our final prayer, let's take a moment of silence to bear in our minds people known to us at this time who need God's healing 
in their lives, whether that's physical, spiritually, mentally. Recognising tonight as we've listened to those words from Matthew's Gospel, that God comes to heal those that turn to him, who turn and know that he is willing to heal. Visit, we beseech thee, O Lord, our homes, and drive away all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell therein to preserve us in peace. And may the blessing be upon us evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest. For it is thy Lord only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this night and forevermore. Amen. And for those that are uh, listening on our phone line service, you are now able to, to put the phone down as the service has finished. Good night and God bless.